Hey guys, I'm your host Andy from Primacy Gaming and today I'm covering what tools you should use and what tools you should not use doing your next PC build. So let's get into it. First off, let's look at a drill. This is a big, um, like mid-sized drill. Do not use anything like this. This is still far too large to use for any PC building. You're gonna end up stripping your screws or you're gonna end up dropping it on one of your expensive PC components and you're gonna be swearing at everybody. So don't use anything like this because you're gonna have a bad day. So now if you wanna use a real compact drill like this nice lightweight snap-on drill, you could use this. The torque point's very low for setting one but still you will strip out the little tiny screws if you use something like this. This is fine if you need to take off a bunch of screws just for removal, but I still stay away from most screw guns in particular unless they're very small like that. What I would recommend getting is like a Protec toolkit like this one. This one you can purchase on Amazon. I'll link it in the description below. I found this one to be a very complete kit for the money, around $30. You can get this kit and it will include all of this. It will easily unroll for storage. It, it makes it a great uh, toolkit for storage. You get a scraper, you get a nice X-Acto knife with extra blades, you get the brush, you get a bunch of uh, plastic, you know, uh, spreaders and pick tools and whatnot so that you're not conducting any electricity. That's why they're plastic. You have a couple of, you know, tweezers and whatnot for fine applications. And then you get this awesome bit set with the driver. And this is the most important thing you need for doing your next build because you need all these special bits. They're security bits, they're small bits. They're definitely sized for electronic components. Now, if you don't have these, you're going to strip out screws and you'll see a lot of reviews will say, oh, this motherboard, the screws were so tight and you know, I can't believe EVGA or, or MSI built this board and we couldn't get these screws out. Well, most of those reviews are because they're not using the right tools. So if you're using the right tools, like something like this with a nice solid metal driver, it's very easy to hold on to. And if you have one of those stubborn screws where you got the right bit, you have the right driver, and you still can't get it, you can easily put this nice T-handle, which also doubles as an extension for the driver, in to give it a nice crack and get that screw off. We just had to do one of those on one of the boards we were putting in. So it does come in very handy, and these bits are magnetic as well, so they do a very, very good job at that. So get one of those kits for sure and you'll definitely have a better build experience. Now beyond that, what else do you wanna get? I would highly recommend getting one of these, a magnetic tray holder. Your, these little screws like these, I mean, you have these screws that are, look at how small they are. I mean, these things are barely the size of your fingertip and you drop them like I just did there. If you drop them, this mat comes in handy because it will keep them from bouncing all over the place, but I like putting them in one of these because you ain't gonna lose them. So you can set that off to the side. Get some Super 33 tape. Um, you may need some electrical tape. Sometimes zip ties aren't enough. You wanna make it real clean and tight. You might not wanna use a zip tie. You might wanna use some tape. This stuff works great. Way better than cheap dollar electrical tape. This might be three or four dollars, but highly worth it. Very flexible. I use it all the time. I've used it for a long, long time. Works very well. Get yourself some zip ties, pick them up at any hardware store for sure. Pick up the variety pack, it really doesn't matter. These are black, you can pick them up, all the different colors. Now, on to the last couple things that I would recommend getting for your build is a mat. You need a mat and you want it to be uh, anti-static electricity mat. So this one has these buttons on it. If you see here, I'll show you real quick. These button snaps here, there's a couple of them. One's to attach to ground. You snap this down, you attach this alligator clip to a ground source. You know, any ground to your outlet ground's fine. Uh, just a grounding source you need to attach that to. Then you have your wristband one that's gonna just slip on your wrist like that. And when you're building, I'm right-handed, so I would slip it on my left hand to do my build. And that way, I'm not going to zap my components. If if I have some static electricity built up on me, I'm not going to discharge it off onto my you know $1,500 CPU or something like that. 
the kit, that tool kit that I showed you also comes with one of those as well. That comes with that kit on top of everything else it has. So it, it has that in addition to everything else. This also, this mat is an Alpha Cool mat, which I'll show you here. I'll link that in the description as well. I find this to be, you know, there's two different mats out there, but this mat here, I think for the money is your best deal. It comes with all these different, uh, you know, these different settings on the mat. So you can see your pump socket mounting holes, your compression fitting sizes. You can see your tubing size chart because we're doing a lot of water cooled builds. So you got your compression fitting sizes for that. You got your tubing size chart for that. And then you have your fan size, you know, for all your fan holes, which is nice. Here's a 120 millimeter thermal take fan. And if I just go to the 120 millimeter setting, I can show there's all the mounting points so you can see they're exactly where they need to be. So if you needed a template to do a drill out, uh, you know, some kind of a frame to mount this particular fan, you needed to know where they were. You could lay it over here. You could get all your mounting points there or measure it off either way. So this comes with a whole variety of things, including your power supply connectors, which is a great thing to have just to quickly look at, oh, hey, that plug is for this or this plug's for that, just so you got some reference because sometimes it's hard to remember everything, even if you've done a lot of, the, a lot of PC type builds. So that is really handy for all that. And if you really wanna spend all the money to get the most of everything, get one of these. This is something you stand on when you're doing your builds. This is a like an like a fatigue type mat, anti-fatigue mat or whatever you'd say for it's real super comfortable, but it's not just that. It has a ground. Yeah, let me roll it out here, get it out of the way. It has a ground loop on it here. So this also, when you're standing on it, will keep static static electricity from building up on you and help keep that you know, from discharging off onto one of your components. So you can attach this to ground as well, stand on that or sit on that or whatever you're gonna do while you're doing your build to build your PC. But these are some of the things that I would highly recommend getting some of this stuff because let's face it, if you buy even a couple of these items, you're probably gonna spend under a hundred dollars. And in the grand scheme of things, when you're doing a custom build or something that's gonna be a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars or more, I mean, $100 is still a drop in the bucket versus wrecking, you know, a $1,000 uh, GPU or a $1,000 motherboard or something like that. So these are all the things I would get. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Primacy Gaming, out.